Prize winners meet young scientists. What makes science so exciting? In the interview, Nobel Physics Laureate Theodor Hensch. Professor Hensch, dozens of Nobel laureates have gathered here in Lindau for the 60th time. You've taken part in this event several times, including this year. What's it like? Also, auch für mich ist es immer wieder spannend, lehrreich. For me, it's always exciting and informative. On one hand, listening to the speeches made by the other Nobel Prize winners. And this time, the interdisciplinary program, where we can hear lectures from fields outside physics, such as medicine, biology, and chemistry. I think the students and young scientists who attend are really important, too. These young people come from all over the world, from more than 70 countries, I believe. We have a chance to talk to them and see what issues are motivating them, and perhaps pass on some of our own experience. It's a very special event. So students and young scientists are attending too. Do you ever look at some of them and think, that person should have won a Nobel Prize too? There's plenty of time. You don't usually get a Nobel Prize until you're quite old, when you've understood how important your discovery is. These young people might win a Nobel Prize one day. Do you think there should be a Nobel Prize for young scientists? Fortunately, there are already several prizes for young scientists. The Nobel Prize is a very traditional award. I don't think the Nobel Foundation would be prepared to change the rules. I don't even know if they'd be allowed to. A few years ago, you won the Nobel Prize for physics. Did it change your life dramatically? All of a sudden you find yourself in the public spotlight. You get lots of tempting invitations. You meet interesting people. But it's very distracting. And naturally it interrupts your work. Does it make research any easier? Are you then able to concentrate on your chosen subject and get funding, for example? Yes, it would be impossible to prove it with a degree of certainty, but I suppose you could say it's much easier to get funding with the prize than without it. Is being a Nobel laureate ever a burden? You have a responsibility to your subject field and to your colleagues to be a worthy representative of your work to the public and politicians. That can be a burden. Sometimes you feel like withdrawing. I have my own laboratory where I can pursue my own crazy ideas. I prefer to spend much more time doing that than meeting dignitaries. So you play a more representative role than before? Yes. One hot topic here in Lindau was cosmology. What's so exciting about that? Cosmology is related to the question of our basic origins. What is our world? How was it created? How might it end? That interests everyone in some way. Religion attempts to provide answers, but they're not totally compatible with scientific knowledge. It's not clear whether we'll ever be able to determine how it all started, but we're doing experiments that involve looking at minute temperature changes in cosmic background radiation. That should give us some insight into how everything may have started. That's exciting. We have the opportunity to measure light frequencies very precisely, allowing us to investigate other related questions, such as whether natural constants really are constant, or whether they gradually change. That's an important issue for cosmology. We may be able to use our methods to help astronomers monitor the continual expansion of space. There's speculation that space is expanding at an accelerated rate. 
Perhaps we'll be able to measure it and demonstrate whether that's true or not true. I find questions like that very exciting. Can we really only identify 3% of the material in the universe? Some people say that, but I don't think we've heard the last word on it yet. A lot is still unknown. Do you think the next few decades will bring major breakthroughs in physics? Do you think something totally new will be discovered? Yes, I think the rate of acquiring more knowledge will speed up too. One basic issue is what is physics and where are its limits? Physics is increasingly daring to venture into fields that have not traditionally been part of its sphere. If you include interdisciplinary fields like astronomy, astrophysics, cosmology and biophysics, then I'm certain we'll make exciting new discoveries, which cannot be predicted at the moment, but which will dramatically influence the course of science. Could this happen quite quickly? It could happen relatively fast. Speaking of young scientists, what's the best way to encourage an interest in science in the upcoming generation? I think you've got to start early. Women have huge potential, and that's rarely being exploited in physics. Very few women study physics or pursue it as a career. The issue is probably settled when children attend a kindergarten. Boys play with train sets, and girls are supposed to play with dolls. If we start it there, and try to arouse some interest and self-confidence and show that you can have fun doing experiments and finding out how the world works, I believe that we could achieve something. Are you doing something to interest young people in your field or to enthuse women about physics? Also, im Kindergarten nicht das ist. Well, not in a kindergarten. It would be very difficult to combine that with our work. But we've got a growing number of women studying for a PhD, and I try to help them at this level. So women can do physics too? Yes, certainly. That's a prejudice a lot of women probably even hold themselves. Well, my physics grades weren't the greatest. <laughs> what will you take home with you from this, the 60th meeting of Nobel laureates in Lindau? The awareness that there's a community of people who are enthusiastic about science, that I've met a lot of new people with whom I may work in the future that it's possible to build networks, meet Nobel Prize winning colleagues and share experiences. We're all in the same boat after all. They all have to represent their field and combine these new duties with their science. How we do that is important too. You mean how best to communicate science? Yeah. Professor Hensch, thank you for talking with us. It was a pleasure.